In this video, we're going to learn how to safely handle the case that the realloc function fails in C. The first thing we'll do is use realloc in a typical situation where it's not going to fail. Then we'll alter the situation such that realloc will fail. And we'll talk about how to handle it and why we should handle it that way. So the first thing we'll do is include stdlib.h because this is a library where realloc, malloc, and free are defined. Then we'll use malloc to initially allocate space for some data. So we'll say int star array is equal to malloc size of int times three. So malloc is gonna allocate space for three integers, and it's gonna return a memory address for that block of memory that's gonna be stored into array. And we could set three values at this dynamically allocated array. So we could say array at index zero is equal to two, array at index one is equal to three, and array at index two is equal to, let's say eight. Then we could use realloc to go out and allocate a bigger block of memory for this data. So the typical way we would do that is we would say array is equal to realloc array size of int times four. So the way realloc works is it's gonna allocate space for four integers because of the second argument here. The first argument though is where the data is located currently that we wanna reallocate space for. Realloc is gonna return a pointer to a potentially new address. And we're again gonna store that address into array here. And this is kind of the typical way you see realloc used. Now, one of the reasons why realloc might return a new memory address instead of using the existing memory address of array is that there might not be enough available space at that memory address to make the existing block of memory that's been allocated bigger. But first we'll set array at index three equal to something like five. And then we'll print out these values just to make sure we're actually using malloc and realloc correctly so far. So we'll say four int i is equal to zero, i is less than four, i plus plus. And let's just print out the data in the array. So array at index percent d is equal to percent d backslash n output i, output the value in the array at index i. And then when we're done, we're gonna call free array. So this is important, free array is gonna free up the space that we dynamically allocated on the heap. And it's essential that we do this whenever we're done working with memory on the heap. We need to call free to free up that space and make it available again for calls to malloc and realloc to use that space again for some other data. If we don't do this, we have what's called a memory leak. And a program with enough memory leaks is no longer gonna be able to allocate space anymore for anything. So let's actually try to run this program now. We'll save it, run it, and we expect to get those four values in our dynamically allocated array. That's what we get, two, three, eight, and five. Let's see what happens in terms of the actual pointer that's being stored in array before and after we call realloc. So here we'll say printf array, and we'll say percent %p for a pointer. And we'll say backslash n, and we'll output array. What this is gonna output is the actual memory address that's stored in array. And here we'll say array before. Then we'll copy this, paste it here, and we'll say array after. So this is gonna look at the actual memory address stored in array. And remember, that's something that realloc is potentially gonna change. So if we save and run this, we get array before is this memory address and array after is this memory address. And you can see they're identical. So what's going on here is that we've only allocated space for one additional integer. So realloc can find additional available space at the existing memory address of the array without it being a problem. If this number was bigger, maybe something like 10,000, it might not be able to find the available space at the existing memory location. We'll save and run this. 
And this time we see that the memory address changed here versus here. So it's possible that the memory address that realloc returns is not going to be the same one that the block of data was originally stored at. So realloc is going to return the memory address for the reallocated block of memory. And as we've seen, that memory address may or may not be different than it was before. But what you often see in C code is this pattern here, where we call realloc with the variable that stores the existing memory address for that block of memory. And we assign the result to that same variable to potentially update it. Now the problem is, what if realloc fails? So if realloc fails, what it returns is null. So realloc could fail if there's not enough contiguous available memory to store the size requested for the reallocated block of memory. This could happen if the amount of memory we request is very, very large. It could also happen if we have many things on the heap already, and there just isn't enough contiguous available memory. So there might be enough available memory, but it's not together in sequence enough to store this block of data of this size. We'll create a situation where realloc is going to fail. So if here I said 999, and we'll repeat this five times. So we're requesting a very, 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 very large block of memory. This will fail. So if we save and run this, we get array after zero by zero. And our program crashed here. So why did our program crash? This is the big problem with taking the approach that we're taking right now. With assigning to array here, the result of calling realloc. Because if realloc fails, number one, this variable is not going to store a valid memory address. Because if realloc fails, it's going to return null. So then when a program tries to use the memory address, it's going to fail because null is not a valid memory address, of course. Now that's actually only the beginnings of our problem. We could try to do something like this to handle it gracefully. We could say here, if array is null, maybe printf realloc failed. And we could have some error handling code like this. But this wouldn't actually fully take care of the problem. We actually have something else we've got to worry about. So remember how we use free to free the block of memory at this memory address here. Now the problem is if realloc returns null and we assign null to array, we've now lost the original memory address where that block of memory was originally stored. So we have a memory leak because we can no longer go back and free that block of memory that realloc failed to enlarge because we've just overwrote where that memory address was stored with null and we can no longer use it because it's gone. So to safely use realloc, what we should do is store the return value of realloc into a temporary variable. Only when we verified that the return value was not null, should we assign it to array. So we'll say here, int star temp to create the temporary variable. And then instead of assigning the return value to array, we'll assign it to temp. And only if temp is not null, are we going to assign to array the value that's stored in temp. So in this way, we're now checking to make sure that realloc actually functioned correctly before we actually assume that we can just sort of use the memory address returned by it safely. So if temp does not equal null, that's when we'll do the reassignment. And the really important thing is that if realloc fails, we're not overwriting array with null. 
array is still going to contain the memory address where the block of memory was originally allocated. So we could say here else, and we could output the array after here. And we're going to find that in the case that realloc fails, temp is going to be null. So if temp is not null, we're going to assign temp to array. But if temp is null, we're going to run this code here. And we're going to find that array is going to have the same memory address as before because we never overwrote it. So if we save and run this, we get that array before has the same memory address as array after. And so then we can use that memory address and free that block of memory. And we no longer have a memory leak. So this technique here of using a temporary variable to store the return value of realloc is how we can safely use the realloc function in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.